Hi, and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this video we'll be continuing with our road to anim of this uh, the lady jogging. In our first one, we did our first initial key pose, but then we tightened up our um, uh, geometry on our rig with some blend shapes so we can get a little bit better of a uh, road to animal body track. So in this one, we will continue doing um, our key poses. So if we actually look for our footage, we can see she's running towards the camera. And one of our key things that we have for this is that we can actually see the feet contact with the floor. So we want to make sure that our key poses are in positions where we can see contact with the floor. This is the same with all sort of body tracking, roto anim. Our contact points with our ground or anything is our our most uh, most important parts of reference. So I'm just going to scrub through this timeline, and we've done our first key pose on the first frame with a right foot on the ground. I'm just going to scrub through, and I'm just going to find points where now her right foot's on the ground. Now her left foot, and at frame 50, we get just to the heel on the ground. So if we go back to frame 1020, we can see that our right foot's here. So I'm going to put our next key pose on frame 1020. Then after that, I'll do it on, we'll do it on frame 1040, then the last one. So let's go to frame 1020. And I'll just go to panels and tear off a copy. So we can see our camera view. Press backslash so I can uh, enable my 2D pan zoom. And I'm going to go to my panels, select perspective. Then I'm going to move up to frame 1020. So now I want to do my next uh, key pose here. So we've got plenty of controls to use. We've got our main control, which I don't think we keyed on the first one. So we'll just, um, we actually don't want to. Uh, I always I always key it on our first uh, key pose, but then after that you don't you don't animate this at all. You leave the main control because this is going to cause problems with where you animate your feet afterwards, because your keyframes will inherit this uh, animation here, which will become an absolute nightmare. So never sort of animate that, then pull that forward. Then do that just to get your key poses because that's going to really affect how you work with the feet. So we'll just undo that. Like y you can, but it will just make your life a lot harder because um, we can get a lot of our um, animation from good placement of the feet, and this will take it away. So I'm just going to keyframe our main controller on the first frame, then I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to put any more keyframes on it. Then to move the actual body, I'm just going to use the main movement control. So you can sort of see it's doing, moving everything on the hips, but it's leaving the feet. This is really useful because then we can lock the uh, feet down at points where she's moving. So on, say on this right foot here, if we scrub for our timeline, we don't need any animation on that. We can just sort of rotate it. But if we had animated this, this means that our foot's going to be moving forward. So then we'd have to counter animate that back. And any sort of time that you end up doing counter animations, it means you're in a probably not in a good place. You want to not be counter animating anything. So by not animating on this. So I'm going to use this main control. And I'm going to go to frame 1020. And I'm going to select my feet. I'm not sure how this is good. And I will change, because I'm currently on object, change it to world, so they will move together. So you can only do that where it's on axis orientation world. Then I'm just going to move them all together. I'm going to roughly get this foot in a similar depth. So now if we scrub through, our body's moving, but our main control's staying, which is what we want to do. 
because that means we can duplicate, we can use copy and paste keys to keep feet in the same place, which we'll do later on. So let's get this in the sort of roughly correct place. Let's have a look. And like I say, your most important reference is your contact points on the ground. But obviously that's the, the, the wrong foot, so let's not worry too much about getting it on top, just more or less getting it in the right depth. So let's just do that and let's move this foot out of the way and get this first, oh well, this, we need to go back from world to object bring this foot back rotate it back and let's get that foot in the right place then we can sort of worry about where everything else is afterwards so it's going to be roughly on the ground the fish is wearing trainers so don't expect it to You can have it slightly hovering if you want. See the rig's bare foot. She's not. So then I'm gonna do the other foot. I'm just gonna roughly line this up. Let's push this back over here. zoom in on this and try and get this in so if we push that backwards and forwards no matter where we put that in depth that knee is not going to reach so that means our probably our height or our, our depth is a little bit off so we'll just sort of we've got it roughly in place so it should be fine so now we're just going to move this Roughly into position. Now you also got to think how people run. They're not running straight forward all the time. So there will be some slight rotations. And don't use um, the jacket as reference because if you look at the jacket, the jacket's going up and down. So try and just keep with always using the joints. So now we've got our, our knee is in. And our head looks not too bad. So now we've roughly got our hips possibly in the correct place. We now need to sort of fix these rotations because he's still straight up. So let's pick this middle. Let's select this. Oh, actually, let's go to the art geometry and put this on reference so we don't keep selecting it. I'm just going to rotate the body around with this control. It's a bit on the hips. We haven't actually keyframed that. Let's double check. So it still looks like we could be at. tiny bit too close so let's actually bring this back a tiny bit cool so we've roughly got these in place let's go back to our feet and knees so let's bring this control down a little bit Nicer. This has both gone underground. Let's just adjust this foot. Just 
So I just need a bit of persuading backwards and forth. Pull that to the side so it could be a bit actually. Just might be too far forward. So just bring it back. Let's just go through and try and get the rest in because everything else will help us with the lineup, whether it's wrong in places or not. So, if lined up, it could be possibly be a little bit higher. Cool. So the head looks good and the shoulders are pretty good. Need to bring down the clavicle. I've lost this knee again, so it's actually possibly. Come a bit forward again and bring that back. So it's just a lot of fine tuning, and yet you could sometimes you could go backwards forwards a lot, but it's it'll be worth it when you you've got a nicer body track. So let's just pull this knee in. That's it. Quite happy with that. Shoulders. Possibly still needs to come up a bit to get that ear in. pretty good. So let's go on to the arms. You can see this clavicle is a little bit high. So let's rotate that down. We haven't keyframed that, so have we keyframed everything? Okay, so if so let's make sure that before we put anything on it. Let's just keyframe some of the things that we've got. There should be keyframes. It's just those two we forgot to do. So those, I'm just making sure that I've got keyframes in that position because I've, I've I've already changed those. I think I just forgot to keyframe them. So those are got. So that's fine. So let's go back to frame 1020. And so now we've had that keyframe on. So it's good. Bring up this arm. So you want to make sure that your arms are in the correct synchronization with your legs. So you don't want to make sure you're because you can get that to fit probably like that, but obviously you don't you don't run like that, or you could try, you might fall over a lot. But generally when one leg's back, the arms the other the same side arms forward. So just to be aware you don't do anything like that. It's like tick tocking. Trying to get this joint in as close as possible. We can just rotate this wrist. And that fits quite nicely, even without any adjustment of the fingers. 
like I said, we, we can go through and do some of the fingers at the end if it's not taking loads of time to do this. Because the even though this is quite oh it's it's not sits running can be quite difficult, but you'll get more difficult ones in your uh, if you continue to do sort of roto anim and stuff like that. But even so getting it right takes so much time. And at the moment, we're only kind of doing rough ones. We're not doing perfectly sticking to the geometry because we just don't have the rigs for it. But it's the same method. You'll just be much more tighter with the geometry. Cool. So if we, so we can just go for our keyframes. Obviously, she looks a bit funny now, but because because we still need to do tweens, it's kind of floating on a magic bicycle. It's not worried. We're just worrying about these keyframes for now. So now we'll go to the next one, which I think was a thousand and forty. And we'll do the same thing again. We'll select the main control, just the feet. Then I'm going to double click on here, change my axis orientation to world. Then I'm going to move this forward until she sort of meets the similar depth. Luckily, the feet is in roughly the right place. We just kind of want to get the hips in. If we can get this sort of part of the body in first nicely, it makes it a lot easier. So now let's put our feet in place. Let's move this one out of the way and do our first contact point. Let's bring this down. Let's make sure our foot is nice and flat on the ground. Not at a funny angle. Cool. I see we're a little bit too close. Just a little while to make sure we change our to our object. It'll just make it a bit easier for you. Cool, so we've got that foot in. Let's now bring out, let's have a look where our knee is. Our knee's around about here. And now let's move the other foot roughly. I always always start with the feet, just rough positions of the feet and uh, work forward from there. I'll probably re end up repeating myself a lot about key poses, but I can't I can't stress enough how, how important they are. So, let's just put off to the side, let's check out. Check about how she's looking. So we've got right foot forward. Probably a bit of twist to the right. Let's get those shoulders in nicely. It's all looking fairly normal, apart from obviously the, the shape of the body. And let's just get this chest control or this sort of waist torso control. Let's bring that in. So our head's lined up. We can just roughly line up her face. And if your sort of positioning is good, most things will work straight away. But um, yeah, like getting your depth is really important. So 
his foot needs to come back to that knee. It's falling on the right place. You always want to make sure that they're in a sort of logical running position as well, so. Well, this calf is a little bit big. We probably, we can probably go back and edit the size of that calf later on with another blend shape. So let's now go ahead and do the arms. Kind of a little further in the middle there. They're not backwards or not forwards. Rotate it until so we get a roughly good, decent wrist alignment. Just rotate the wrist up. And if you want, you can adjust the fingers. But I'm not worrying about it too much for now. When you're in the sort of zone of doing fingers, you're already sort of almost in your last stages of the actual body track, which we're quite a long way away from that moment. Uh, we'll just do the elbow. That sort of fits straight away. Let's just double check this head. We've not moved it off. Oh, that all looks pretty good. Seems to work quite nicely. So we can just skip for our key keyframes. We've only made three now. It's quite important to double check that it's not doing anything too weird in the perspective. And it looks alright. So now we can just do our last one, which is uh, 1050. I'm just going to choose my translation tool and go to world. And I'm going to select my waist control on my feet again. Yeah, I'm going to bring it. forward so it's sort of roughly meets so we can have gone way too far forward I think on that last key push it's quite squatted down So we'll just do the same again. First of all, just, uh, actually on this one, I will start straight away bringing the hips up. Just so I can check if I've got her in the right depth. Possibly a little bit too close. Cool. So now we'll do our... Just, we'll just move this left leg out of the way. We'll bring, uh, sorry, her right, her right leg, and we'll bring our left leg forward. So we obviously can't see where her heel is at the moment, but we can try and do a best guess. It's possibly that it's very close to the floor. Make sure we change our orientation back to object. So our heel's kind of close to the floor, so let's look where our body position is now. Let's just adjust that and see how far our head's off.
and you'll be surprised how much you can actually get in just from using the hips. So bring this down. Let's bring this foot back so she looks like she's actually running and not doing something weird. Bring this back. She's in quite a large stride at the moment. And actually, I think when we bring this knee in, you see we've actually got some reasonable deformation on the knee, which actually looks quite nice. We've got this, we can see the little hump here on her knee and also the hump here, so it's quite a good indication of where the knee is. Let's see if we can match that. Cool, so let's just go around. We need to make sure that we're not hyperextending because that will also cause us problems. I don't think I've mentioned that actually, so try and avoid hyperextending your rig's legs. I wonder if we can actually get that knee in nicely. Cool, so that's, that's quite close. So let's get these shoulders in. So you can see that she's definitely... Well, we didn't do a keyframe on 40 because I don't think we need to, but we'll make sure we put one there. Let's make sure... Chest, our shoulders are sort of in the right place. So we haven't actually used these. I don't think we needed to use these. Let's try and avoid using those at the moment because we haven't used them throughout, so. But who's to say we don't need them? But we should be able to get a pretty good lineup with everything. Let's just try and do this head now. So the head looks a little bit possibly might need to go a little bit further back. Let's get that head in. Cool. So we've got a really nice headline up now. We may have, when we pulled that back, we may have hyperextended the knee, so let's just make sure we haven't done that. So just bring this close to the ground, because I think she's probably 
either on the ground, just because it's the last frame. Let's not worry too much about it. Let's just get a really good pose. Cool, so she looks like she's jogging here, so let's do the arms. So let's raise this clavicle up. In fact, let's just leave that. Let's get her shoulder up first. This is quite far across the body. And so it looks like our shoulder's still a bit off. So I say, as long as you get all these joints in, you should be having a pretty good time because if your shoulder's here and your elbow's here your hand is going to be in the right place as long as you're not really deforming the rig too much or at all you should only because you should only do like your real adjustments on the one frame don't do it on any others oh, you have a really weird looking warped rig Hand, so set the hand, let's rotate it down. Yeah, it's a pretty good sign. It's pretty much fitting with some, probably need some slight adjustments, but if we go back, um, just select our keyframes there. Let's have a look at our, how it's looking. Oh, my knees actually come off here. Forget to do the knee. So let's look for our keyframes. It's looking pretty good. So I think this is kind of this this footage is slowed down, so it's a little bit weird. It's not actually traveling that far in this run. And just make sure you save it because things can happen. You don't want to restart, so just make sure you get up to the top and just go File, Save Scene As, and just save a version. So now we've done our sort of our rough key poses, let's go through and do some more key poses. We'll do our like in betweens, so we can do our 1010, 1030, and one here as well. So let's go to 1010 and let's have a look where it is in depth because the chance side might be right if it's in between it's probably just our height that's probably a little bit off so let's straight away just go with the hip control and sort of align it and get it roughly the torso in the right place Twist it that way a bit. Cool, so we still need doing betweens, but like I said earlier that we've kind of if we'd moved our main control, it would put animation on everything. But at the moment our foot feet are just tweening between keyframes. So if we look at this left this right foot, sorry, it practically doesn't it only tilts really. So it doesn't raise up. So what we can do, we can go to this keyframe, right click, copy, go to frame 1010, right click, paste. And now we've got that, that foot locked into position. And this is the major benefit of making sure that you do not animate on the main control. Otherwise you'll have to probably keyframe every single one, which is a nightmare. So we can select our foot now. And let's just put a roll on it. Cool. 
and bring it up. So now we've only got a roll on it. Because it shouldn't really move from that position. Then we can bring this knee in. Oh, no, the knee, sorry. Oh, froze a little bit there. Make sure you save it. Hate for it to crash if you've gone so far already. It's just that knee and. Cool, so yeah, mine crashed, so that's why you always want to make sure you save it. So, sorry about that. So, we're going to go back to this 1010 again and do that again. Or you can just fast forward through this. So, I'm just going to get those hips lined up. Head in the right place. A bit too far close at the moment. So we'll just get a little twist on our body there. Let's match the shoulders. So, as I said earlier, with the feet, it's the reason why we don't animate on the main controller is because we can now copy these frames. So I'm going to right click and copy it on frame 1010 and go paste. So now that foot is locked in that position. The only thing that we need to do is add that rotate. So let's add the rotate and go bring that in. So now We've not had to do much apart from just rotate it and possibly move it forward. Whereas if you had animated on the main control, you'd probably have to animate almost every keyframe and you'd, you'd be counter animating, which is not good. You want to avoid counter animating at all costs because it's just fighting against yourself. So that knee lines up really well there, so that's always a good sign. So bring this foot in. Knee lines up pretty well. Possibly needs to come. Down. So that looks quite good. So let's look at our body. Our head's actually in a reasonably pl good place. And our shoulders look like they're lining up really well. So let's go ahead and do our arms. So this arms, just make sure you're always keeping your arms and legs in the correct synchronization. You don't want any weird sort of tick-tocking movements. And probably not explaining loads and loads of things here but I'd rather just you watch and see how I do it instead of explaining every small thing something like this sometimes it's just better to see and slowly go through it and like I said with rotor animal body tracking it's one of those things that well I was when I first started I wasn't it took me a while to get anywhere near decent at it so I wasn't too keen on animating. But after a while, after lots and lots of practice, you sort of get used to it. And what really helped me was just understanding key poses. Because I want to do as little as as little animation as possible. It's not it's not my uh, favourite subject. But you'll find that you'll end up being sort of sort of match with soup and generalist at the same time you end up doing a lot of different things so it's all good though 
Rotor Anim is just a very hard skill to pick up. Not many people want to do it because it is really difficult. But it's not all that bad. I'm saying that as we're probably not doing the most difficult Rotor Anim. Seems like these hips are kind of. Not in the right place. Cool, so we can sort of. Oh, it's not too long. Let's look for our keyframes. This looks pretty good. And if we just zoom out and look at our perspective. It shouldn't look too far off, obviously. Still lacking a lot of movement. But it's not it's not the worst. It's, it just needs a lot of refinement. So So that's good to our next key post. Make sure you save it every so often. We'll go to frame 1013. We'll just straight away bring these hips up and try and roughly get a decent depth of it. Because hopefully our, our first set of poses should get us in a reasonably good depth. And unfortunately in this one, we don't have any contact on the floor. So, this is where we have to trust our sort of key poses. Need to make sure that you don't hyperextend these. That's bad. You don't want to hyperextend them. If you find that you're hyperextending it, it means that your rig's probably in the wrong depth. She's really not that far off. It doesn't look like she's that far off the ground, so. Let's try and put foot in. That's sort of working already there. Let's bring the right correct knee in. Now let's bring this foot back. We can see that that's very, very close to the ground, so that's quite useful. It's not on the ground, so... Changing that. So let's try and roughly get this in the correct. It's when it becomes a little bit more difficult not having contact points. Because we know that foot's not really touching the ground, so it's probably a good indicator of where we need to be. Of 
could be wrong. So let's just double check that I'm not lining up the wrong leg. Yeah, that's fine. Was about perfect, maybe it was right in the first place. Maybe, maybe it's something to do with more of the rotation. Let's just make sure that's not hyper extended. That looks alright. Shoulders are sort of relatively in the correct place. Cool, so let's do the arms. Bring this clavicle up, then the shoulder. Said, so make sure that your arm synchronous synchronization is correct. It's always right leg forward must be right leg back, unless she runs very odd. I think she runs perfectly fine in this. So let's make sure our body track does as well. Cool, that what fits really nicely. Just bring this clavicle. This one obviously is forward, so we can just rotate that elbow into place. Then line up that hand. Let's look at the head. We just need a small rotation and the eyes, nose and mouth is pretty much lined up. So it's looking pretty good. If we look at perspective, nothing's weird's happening. If we scrub for our timeline. Obviously we have the same problems we had before. If we skip between our keyframe. We've got the sliding foot. So we can quickly fix that. So let's copy. Let's copy that keyframe. Let's actually copy it to 30. Then all we need to do is rotate this up. Skip through. See, so that's that's probably going to fall into the area of doing fine more refinement. Let's 
Let me just actually paste it there. Then just rotate. And bring it up. Just so it's got a rough rotation on it. Let's see how we're following the foot now. So that's probably pushing back a little bit further than we can actually see. So it becomes quite a bit difficult because this obviously So probably our position might be a bit wrong there. Let's just paste that key again. In fact, let's copy that one. And paste. It's already got that rotation on. Shift just a bit, tiny bit up. So we'll still go through and refine it a bit later, but we'll just sort of fix that foot. And we'll go back to doing our in-betweens. So we don't need to do that. So we've done most of the in-betweens on there. We just probably could fix this foot from sliding here. So select that foot, right click and copy. Paste. Oh, so it's staying in the same place, we just need to rotate it. Whenever you rotate it, you need to raise it up, otherwise the feet will go through the ground. So it's just logical movement. So we've actually done that. See how we've done our right foot? It's still a bit rough. We can do that to the left foot now. So let's have a look where that comes in. So we can select our control, copy it. Oh, we've already done that one, sort of. But we can probably paste it back there and do the heel. So now you've got the rough step down. And it's coming up. All right, it's not perfect at the moment, so. Don't worry too much. We really don't have to do that much on this one. So, if we just look at our rig now, let's 
let's not worry about that. Let's just have a look here. And you can see we've got something pretty good. Obviously, we've got lots of weird stuff going on, but we still need to do the in betweens. So, we've got some rough key poses out, so I think now we can go on to just doing some more refinement. So, in the next one, we'll go through and just refine it a little bit more. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.